Hey everybody, I'm Mike Peters. And I'm Rebecca Farina. And you're watching LIE. <laughs> Coming up, we'll get a lowdown on what's been going on with the Great Neck Plaza concert series. We'll check in with some interesting guests that came into our studio recently. Plus, we'll check out a brand new apartment complex that's opening up in Great Neck Plaza. All, All that, that and more on LIE. Oh, it's good to be back in the studio. It's awesome. How's How it going? Have you been having a good summer? I've been having a good summer, but I get bored sometimes. I'm always looking for something to do, you know, how it goes. Well, the Great Nick Plaza Summer Concert Series is still going on. Oh, that's right. In Firefighters Park on Grace Avenue, every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, you'll get to hear a new group of musicians. It's awesome, yeah, and PATV is always there filming, so let's take a look at some of the concerts. so cool and they're super yeah, local super local you know great neck plaza is a really happening place yeah. you know and really exciting news they're opening up a brand new state-of-the-art building there super awesome mylon studart was actually at the ribbon cutting you want to take a look yes take a look what is four stories tall 40,000 square feet and holds 30 apartments the new galleria building at five to nine grace avenue in the town of great neck plaza Yay. 
The building debuted this week with a red ribbon cutting ceremony, attended by friends, families and neighbors, and by the top politicians in the community. It's an attractive place to live that young people, empty nesters, will want to live. And there's retail on the bottom floor, which of course helps to grow the tax base. First of all, this is my district, and I'm very proud of this building. I've been watching it from the beginning. It is gorgeous, it is unique, it is different, and it wonderful here in the town of North Hempstead. The Galleria took nearly three years to be completed. It has nine one-bedrooms, 18 two-bedrooms, and three three-bedrooms, all available for rent with a move-in date set for September. Every apartment has its own patio with a view to Grace Avenue, making it a prime location. Residents can take advantage of a private gym area and a rooftop garden and are entitled to two parking spots. It's also a mixed-use building. It holds a 4,000 square feet area of commercial space that can be subdivided, while three of the residential apartments are set for workforce housing. Oh, it's really nice, it's very luxurious, actually it's beautiful. The Galleria certainly fits in the luxury category. The floors are imported Italian porcelain, the lighting is LED for energy efficiency, the kitchen cabinetries are Italian designed, all while over 16 cameras provide 24-7 surveillance of the common facilities and parking lots. The elected officials and the developers here today aren't just talking about how beautiful this building is, but how much economic activity it'll be bringing to Great Neck Plaza. As you bring population to downtown, then the population would purchase locally, will attend to the restaurants locally, and this in turn would help the economy of local area. This is the purpose of this type of buildings in this type of locations. And that's what it's about, bringing more residents to the downtown so they frequent our shops and it helps create more vibrancy. We're seeing that model throughout Long Island as being very successful. Government officials hope the Galleria will heat up the local economy of Great Neck Plaza. But it looks like the winners here will be the tenants. In Great Neck Plaza for PATV Long Island, I'm Mylon Studart. So July was a really awesome month. We Very had awesome. a lot of really cool guests come to our studio and even a brand new show, which we'll get to later. Yeah, we actually had a world famous musician, Toby Tobias, in the studio and he performed here for us. He's a South African born musician and he's about to start a North American tour. Uh, you can get information about that tour at tobytoby.com, but if you can't wait, why don't you take a look at this clip from when he was in our studio. Just like a boat upon the 
got to keep on moving so you never sink. We have a brand new show here on PATV called The Hip Hop Hood Report, and it films right here in our studio. It's a down-to-earth look at hip hop, technology, sports, movies. It's really cool. Yeah, it's got it all. Plus, it's got some really awesome fitness tips for everybody at home. We're really excited for you to check it out. Let's take a look at a clip. We are back. Season 2, the Hip Hop Hood Report. Providing real information to our younger generation, bringing you the bad and the good from the hood. That's right, season two, I'm excited. I'm here with my co-host, the fitness sheriff. What's up, what's up, what's up, man? You good, you good? I'm all right, you know, mm -hmm. same old. Another season, right? Another season, I'm glad to be back. All right, I'm glad. shout out to my producer, Randy Fisher, in the house, you yeah. know that. Yeah. Holding it down, Marcelo, Erica Bradley, it's all going down, man. We appreciate all your help. So this is season two, Hip Hop Hood Report. And, I mean, if you think season one was hot, we have a lot popping this year. Because there's been a lot of things that's going on. And, 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 and before I get into what's really popping, let me know, let me tell you what, what our three main focuses is going to be for season two. The heroin and opiate epidemic, gun and gang violence, and sexual abuse against women and girls. We're going to focus on that. We're going to talk a little bit about Donald Trump and the presidential elections and where we're going with the mid-season elections and, of course, education. But right now, I want to talk about uh, the opiate epidemic and where that's going. So I got some facts. I got some facts. A staggering 175 people died daily, seven every hour, from a drug overdose. And 116 of those deaths are from opiate-related drugs. That's right, opiate-related drugs. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's provisional data indicate drug overdose deaths increased again from 2015 to 2016 by more than 21% from 52,898 deaths and that's 33,091 from opiates in the year ending in January 2016 to 64,070 deaths, 42,259 from opiates in the year ending in January 2017. So just think about those numbers. How many of our young people out there that are dying from the opiate epidemic? We have to do something about that. I know the president has declared a state of emergency, but we've yet to see the money, Mr. President. We need to see the money. And we need to know what you young people are going to do out there to prevent yourself becoming a victim of an overdose death. And as part of the heroin, the Nassau County Heroin Prevention Task Force, we're going to be doing all we can to eradicate this problem, but we're going to need your help and support. So anyway, um, I know we got into some serious things um, um, later on during the episode. We're going to talk about 
um, the Me Too thing with our guest, Callie Mack. He's in the house. You're going to see him later on. But um, um, let's talk about, you know, what's popping in hip-hop, man. What's going on? There's a lot of stuff going on in hip-hop right now. Um, you know, I've never seen the industry like this. There's, there's a lot of people beefing. Who's beefing? Takashi 69. I've been hearing about this cat. Tell me about what, what's going on with this guy. He's, he's a new artist. I don't want to say necessarily too new, but these last five months, like, he's really been buzzing with his, his new singles. But he's just been stirring up a bunch of conflict. Um, and supposedly he's a blood, he's a gang member, and he's just shaking up the industry, which in one case could be bad, and in the other case it could be good. He's exposing people, you know what I'm saying, who, who haven't been exposed before. Mm. But at the same time, um, he's, he's making gu uh, gun and gang violence seem cool. So do you think this is part of marketing? We I, talked about I think, that. I think, I think it's definitely a part of marketing. I mean, you have a kid with the, the number 6'9 tattooed all over his body, and he's walking around with rainbow hair saying he's the king of New York. And meanwhile, there's people, hundreds of people before him who set the stone, like, for him to be where he's at. And, you know what I'm saying? And he's just making a lot of noise, and he's at it every single day. So he's always causing publicity for himself. And even though it's bad, bad publicity is still good publicity in his case. So. so you would say he's a marketing genius? Either he is or the team he has is a marketing genius. All right. So, you know, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come back and talk about him later on. But for right now, you know, let's go to break. All right? All right. Let's do let's it. Go to break. If you've been watching LIE, you're very familiar with Did You Know with Carlene Lavelle, a segment here on LIE. And now it's time for part two of the Cradle of Aviation. The Cradle of Aviation is unique because it has a prized possession, which is the lunar module, right? and only one of three in the world. The, the program was going to go up to Apollo 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the last mission was Apollo 17, and then the funding for the program was cut uh, by the federal government. So the last uh, mission to the moon was Apollo 17, so Apollo 18, 19, and 20. Those lunar modules that were all built here on Long Island still exist. One's at the Kennedy Space Center, one's at the Smithsonian in Washington, and we are lucky enough to have the third. Ours would have been Apollo 18. And unlike the other two institutions, your module sits on the moon. We wanted to give people the feeling of what it was like when Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon. So we display it on a lunar environment. Uh, it is the only one displayed that way. Uh, we've had Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin here a number of times, and he's always said this is his favorite lunar module. Okay. All right. So as far as acquiring uh, spaceships and lunar modules and aircrafts, the biggest thing for me is how do you do that? How does that come about? I mean, rumor has it eBay can help with that. <laughs> but how does one get a plane in their house. The lunar module came to us from the Grumman Corporation, which is now Northrop Grumman. Uh, this was sitting in, in boxes in a warehouse and was brought here as a donation. And uh, our docents, our volunteers in the galleries, uh, rebuilt it uh, the way it would have looked on the moon. And these docents weren't just like general volunteers, they actually worked at the... Many of them who work in the space gallery were working on the Apollo space program at Grumman. So, if, you, if you're able to get one of them while you're walking around the museum, you're going to get a little piece of history, too. And 2018 marks a significant year for the lunar module, is that 2019, right? 2019. 2019 marks a significant year. And what is that? That will be the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong taking the first steps on the moon. It will be July 20th, uh, 1969. So in July 20th of 1990, uh, 2019, <laughs> will be the 50th anniversary. 
And is the museum doing anything to commemorate that or in preparation we are, for it? We are going to start uh, what we're calling our Countdown to Apollo at 50. And that'll be a series of events and activities, a new exhibit here at the museum. Uh, and what we want to do is celebrate all the achievements of Apollo, but also look to the future of space exploration. You know, should we go back to the moon? Should we go on to Mars? How are we going to do that? And what we're hoping is that all of the events and activities, both here at the museum and with school districts that we're working with, will help to inspire a new group of kids to say, I want to go into that business. I want to be an engineer. I want to be an astronaut. Uh, and so that's what we're hoping, is that a few light bulbs go off of kids on Long Island or from Brooklyn or Queens that say, that's what I want to do. And one of the real interesting things from what I've seen, just the bits of walking around, and I hope to do some more today, is you have a lot of partnerships with science, technology, education partners. Can you tell me more about that? And is it primarily for students? Is it for adults? Is it for people like me? <laughs> It's, it's kind of for everybody. I mean, we like to say that whether you're two or 102, um, you can enjoy your visit to the museum. Um, we have partnerships with a lot of colleges and universities. Uh, we have partnerships with probably uh, the majority of school districts in the area uh, who use this as kind of a teaching uh, lesson. So uh, school groups that come here, it isn't just a free-for-all, they'll have a programmed uh, uh, lesson plan that they have here or they can go into our theater in the Dome Theater and see a, a magnificent show. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a lot for everybody. Um, even little kids, two or three year olds, are amazed by the colors and the shapes and sizes and you know they know about Buzz Lightyear uh, mm -hmm. so we try to tell them about Buzz Aldrin. So. <laughs> um, and then just the average visitor, it's, uh, it tells a story. It tells a history of the, this region. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the connections that aviation and the role aviation played in that history. So what is the mission of the museum? We actually have three missions. Okay. All right. Our three missions are preservation, mm -hmm. education, and inspiration. Okay. So preservation is obviously preserving our rich history. Mm -hmm. uh, education is using that collection of aircraft and spacecraft we have to educate students about science, technology, engineering, and math and then using all of that to inspire them for careers in aviation or aerospace. So, and they all work together. So events that we hold, programs we run, all try to fit those three missions. Well, this is all like, amazing to hear about, but I want to check it out. So what, how do I start? What do I do? Well, I think what you should do is take some time and go through the galleries chronologically. Okay. Uh, and then you can come back to me and tell you what you like the best. I think I can do that. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. To explore the Cradle of Aviation Museum with me, tune in to the next episode of Did You Know? Gun violence in America is an epidemic. So much so that Long Islanders were willing to forego their weekend at the beach and come together to protest for stricter gun laws in America. Mylon Studart was in Huntington recently and has footage for us from the March for Our Lives. Let's take a look. I know what a round of an M16 does to a human body. Since the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School mass shooting that killed 17 people on this year's Valentine's Day in Parkland, Florida, 153 people have been killed since in 170 mass shootings. Over 300 Long Islanders gathered here in Breezy Park on a sunny summer afternoon to fight for gun control and prevent more deaths. Man, we had a really great show today. It was an awesome show. We had the Hip Hop Hood Report, brand yeah. new show here on PATV. We saw a little snippet from Toby Tobias and his uh, national tour. We had a new segment of Did You Know with Cradle of Aviation. Yeah, it was a really, really great show, and I can only think of one way to end it. A vibe with Grace Grella. Here you go, Grace. Incoming, the plane, awesome. Thank you, Mike and Rebecca. I always appreciate your incoming uh, info de -de 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 for my vibe segment so we can make sure that August has some good vibes for everybody out there watching us. And you know what? This August really will be um, the best month 
to work and play hard. We're going to combine those. So with all the energy that's um, happening in the sign of Capricorn in the month of August, and I know August is usually um, the month, not usually it is, the month of um, Leo and Virgo, but you know what? The planets are in the sign of Capricorn. The big heavy hitters are in the sign of Capricorn, and they're saying it's time to take care of business. And after you do that, then you can schedule some uh, playtime. So when you schedule your playtime, why not come down to PATV? You can create your own uh, uh, show in our studios. You can learn how to uh, get involved in production, either um, become a crew member, uh, produce your own show. There's a lot of creative energy down here in PATV that we can share with you. And we have a lot of good vibes. So August, good vibe month, month of creative energy. It all blends together. It's like the perfect marriage. Woo! So come on down to PATV. Just shoot us an email at info at PATV.org and we'll give you the details on how to do that. We want you to be vibing high this August. Thank <laughs> you.